everybody, this is Joanne. Think of a major publication where you can read about science. National Geographic, Scientific American, Discover Magazine, The New York Times, Popular Science. And if you've ever read an article with the biological theme, then chances are you have read something by today's featured popular science author, Carl Zimmer. Armed with a degree in English and an immense curiosity about biology, Carl Zimmer is one of the premier science authors today. I read his works not just to learn about biology, but to gain an understanding of how to communicate to the general public. Carl's books have been both solitary and collaborative projects. Let's take a look at some ways you can enjoy his writing. In 1999, Carl published At the Water's Edge. Uh, this one is called Macroevolution and the Transformation of Life, but there is also a version out there with the subtitle that says Fish with Fingers, Whales with Legs, and How Life Came Ashore But Then Went Back to Sea. This is where Carl asks how our fishy ancestors climbed out of the water onto dry land and then some of them went back again. He describes discoveries that helped us understand what may have happened and ultimately improved our understanding of how evolution works. In 2001, with the reissue in 2006, we see this very large book called Evolution, a tri The Triumph of an Idea. Uh, this large book, somewhere between a coffee table book and a textbook and companion to the PBS series, lays out uh, just about everything science knows about evolution. In 2001, with an expected re-release again this year in 2011, we see the book Parasite Rex, Inside the Bizarre World of Nature's Most Dangerous Creatures. And this is a book that's sure to give you the heebie-jeebies, but impossible to turn away because these creatures are just so fascinating in how they can take over ecosystems and species, but only up to a point. So we see the push and pull of how nature balances itself and so while we aren't completely happy with their presence there, surely they serve a function. Uh, personally, I cannot wait for the re-release because, uh, and I'm hoping there are more pictures, because I'm a gal who sure loves her electron micrographs. In 2004, we were treated to the book called Soul Made Flesh, The Discovery of the Brain and How It Changed the World. And in this book, Carl looks at the discovery of the role of the brain. And this story um, and the importance of the structures of the brain is a truly fascinating one that began in 17th century England. Questions of where the soul resided and how thought came to be really was an obsession for people at that time. So the search through the human body uh, with the brain at the center was really going in full force. Um, anyone with a fascination for the brain and neuroscience and has a strong stomach will definitely appreciate this book. In 2005, we see the book uh, in conjunction with the Smithsonian called Smithsonian Intimate Guide to Human Origins. And of course, this book, it takes an anthropological look at the origins of the human. So we will see in here a lot of images of uh, fossils and bones uh, put together and it, he just discusses this in a very clear, easy manner. In 2008, Carl released a book that I have previously reviewed called Microcosm, E. coli and the New Science of Life. This is a fabulous book all about the scientist's most favored modeled organism has helped us learn most of the molecular biology we know and has helped us watch evolution in action and even allows people dabbling in synthetic biology to create new little machines that do everything from create plastics to sense dangers within the environment. In 2009, we see a great textbook called The Tangled Bank. And wow, what a great textbook it is. This is an introduction to evolution. It has succinct diagrams, ultra clear explanations, and basically it has it all. This book is from the library, but I think I'm going to get myself a copy and recommend it to everyone I know who has children. 
So at some point, Carl wondered, what should I do with all these writings I've collected over the years? And maybe it's not quite ready to be put into a book, or maybe I'm looking for an easier avenue to do this. So brave Carl Zimmer decided to enter the world of e-book publishing, and he put um, many writings about the brain and compiled it into a book called Brain Cuttings, uh, which is only released on the e-version. Uh, this is a very forward-thinking way to do things. This is on my Kindle for the iPhone. Again, to read about the brain, as described by Carl Zimmer, is an immense pleasure. And now to the present day. Uh, Carl Zimmer's book, A Planet of Viruses, is released now in 2011. This one is in collaboration with the Science Education Partnership Award. This diminutive, engaging book was uh, read by me in one short sitting. Uh, this book is a fabulous and beautifully done overview of the world of viruses covering the history of how viruses were discovered and it touches upon the commonly known viruses, rhinovirus, influenza, HIV, SARS, Ebola, um, as the ones that affect humans, as well as the ones that we can find in the marine environment as well as uh, ones that infect plants. Uh, this is, of course, once again, a great work by Carl Zimmer, and I cannot recommend it enough. And finally, uh, later, coming out later this year, in October 2011, will be the book called Science, Inc. And this book is about uh, science tattoos and the lengths that people will go to share their love of science or express their love of science. And this of course comes about through the extensive collection of science tattoos that Carl Zimmer has collected on his website. So I definitely look forward to this. I will not be getting a tattoo and instead will continue to share my love of science through videos. I think that's as far as I'm going. I've thoroughly enjoyed sharing with you the works of Carl Zimmer, and I hope you find something that's definitely worth reading, uh, and definitely one of those uh, authors where you're reading it and enjoying it so much that you might actually forget that you're learning something. Thank you very much for listening.